In this photo editing video tutorial, I'm going to share with you how we can use Luminar AI to edit and improve our architectural photography. In this one, I'll be working on this photograph here that you see straight out of camera, and I'll show you how we can improve it and turn it into this. Dealing with high contrast architectural interior photography was the subject of our last video where I showed you how you can take an image like this and with a really simple template and the minimum of editing, you can transform that into something you can get back to your client that looks like this. Now for me, this isn't quite the finished article, but this is what I'd send back to my client for the proofing process where they can look at these initial proofs and decide whether or not as part of their whole set from the collection of photos I took at the property, as you can see here, do they want to license that particular photo? So I just need to have it looking pretty good. So if I hold shift and click on this photo and then press N to bring them up both side by side, you can see how we've got quite a dramatic transformation from the left image to the right. But what if you're a Luminar user? Old habits do die hard and I've been processing this way in Lightroom for some time. And somebody said in the comments of the last video, it really is a shame that you can't do this in Luminar. So in this video, I wanted to show you that in fact, you can do all of this inside of Luminar and more. So the caveat to working with any of these kind of images and trying to pull the most dynamic range that you can out of those images so that you can recover all the highlights and the shadows, you must be photographing in RAW. Working with JPEGs just isn't going to cut it with this style of processing, but you can work that way. You just need to capture a series of bracketed images as I have done here, where you go from a dark exposure all the way to a very bright exposure. And so you've captured the full dynamic range and then you use a piece of software such as Aurora where you can merge those together automatically. And if I just flip to Aurora quickly, you'll see that I have done that. And that, as you see there, is Aurora's automatic processing with just the tiniest of adjustments, dropping the highlights, dropping the saturation slightly, and just adding a tiny bit of clarity. That's all I've done manually. So if, for example, you're a real estate photographer and you want a really quick fix for turning around your photos super quickly, you could use Aurora, just throw all your files into Aurora. You can batch process them and it will combine the HDR photo for you that you can then export and send straight through to your agent. But in this video, we're going to look at Luminar. So here we are inside of Luminar, we bypass the templates and we're going to come straight into the editing section. So the first thing you need to know with your photo is does it have enough dynamic range in the file? And the easiest way to do that I find is just to open the light section, grab the exposure slider, push it all the way to the right and say, have I got details in the shadows? And if the answer is yes, as we have here, then you're in a good place there and then drop it to the left and then look outside here and down here on the rug along the strip of light here. Have we got details in our highlights? Yes, we have. So within this one file, we actually have all the data that we need to actually create a photo that contains a good exposure and detail within the shadow area within the kitchen here, but also brings back a bit of detail outside the property here. And this is a situation that you see heaps when photographing architecture and real estate. You're going to have a very bright exterior and a dark interior. So while Luminar AI is very much marketed around this idea of artificial intelligence processing your photos, I think as users, we also need to appreciate that as well as AI being underneath the hood of this piece of software, it's also a very powerful raw processor. So in the same way that Lightroom was able to recover the shadows and the highlights within the editing section and the light tool here, we're able to do the same thing in Luminar. So let me drop the highlights all the way to the left and straight away you see recovery going on in our highlights there. So if we use the eye tool to look at our before and our after, we've recovered the highlights. Let's grab the shadows and be really aggressive and push those to the right. And boom, you can see that we've got heaps of detail being brought back into these shadows. We were able to be pretty aggressive with them in Lightroom and the same in Luminar, but I just feel it's a little bit too much. So we'll just ease those off slightly. So as you can see, without any other adjustments, if we just look at our before and our after, we're already well on the way to a deliverable photo. Now I often say within Luminar, Enhance AI is a really great place to start. And for a lot of situations it is. But in this particular case, we just wanna make sure we've got our highlights and our shadows in place to start with. So now we've got a much better tonal range throughout the image, right through from highlights to shadows. The next thing that's really important to do is actually fixing the optics of the lens. And this is something that becomes super important when you're dealing with architectural photography. If you look to the left of the frame and also to the right here, you can see that we've got a bit of warping of the lines that should be nice and straight. 
That's known as barrel distortion and we want to fix that. So we'll scroll down here all the way to the bottom and here within the professional section we've got this optic section. And the great thing with Luminar AI is just by clicking this auto lens correction on and the great thing is straight away that distortion is gone. Luminar AI has gone into its database and found the relevant lens profile to match your raw photo to correct for any distortion that that lens has. Next you want to check chromatic aberration on. That's just going to fix any of that magenta or cyan fringing you can sometimes get around the edges of your nice straight lines. We're going to click defringing as well. And if your lens is prone to darkening in the corners from vignetting, what you can do is just crank the de-vignette slider up to a point where it kind of gets rid of that for you. So whereas when I'm working with photography from a more creative point of view, I quite like a bit of vignetting. But in architectural photography, I think it's more important that you have a realistic representation of the space. So if you have any options for correcting the optical flaws of your particular lenses, you need to take advantage of those and turn them on. Now, while in this particular image, you can see I did have the camera pr pointing pretty much straight forward. You can see that the vertical lines do slightly converge. They're pinching towards the top ever so slightly. So if you look at this edge here, it's very close to that bottom left hand corner. At the top, it just starts to encroach in. And that's the same with the edge of this wall here. So we need to make sure that these are nice and straight. The architect designed the house with nice vertical walls, and that's how you need to portray it in your imagery. So let's come on up to Composition AI and in the section here, Image 3D Transform, you have an option to play with the verticals. So if I give that a good twist there, you can see that by moving that slider, you can actually introduce or remove any convergence. So there you see at minus two, things are starting to look nice and straight. If your image is a one point perspective, you'll also want to make sure that your horizontal lines are also nice and straight, nice and parallel. But this is a two point perspective image, so we only need to worry about our verticals in this one. While I'm in the composition tool, I can also work on the crop. So this particular blurred edge here, where the wall was much close to my lens, I wanna get rid of that. I don't, I don't think we need to see it. And if we look at the top right, there's just a tiny hint of a little bit of wood there. Any distracting elements that exist at the edge of the frame, I'll normally try and remove those. So I'm just going to bring this in ever so slightly. And I may bring this crop up just ever so slightly as well. If you want to clean things up further, you could pull this in here just so we lose those cabinet handles as well. And if we're happy with that, we just close this down and that crop will be applied. So as you progress making changes, I think it's always a good idea to look at your before and your after just by clicking the eyeball tool there. And you can see that we've got rid of that lens distortion. We've got our shadows and highlights recovered and we're moving forward nicely. OK, let's jump back into our light section here. And there's a few more things that we can do through this very powerful panel here. This is very much talking into the raw file itself. So if for whatever reason you're not happy with the white balance of your photo, which I'm pretty happy with this, but what you can do is obviously select this eyedropper tool and come to a, a neutral part of your image, something that should be representing a neutral gray. Click that and the white balance will be adjusted accordingly. I find this far too cool though. So you could always look for a better position to click and just see what the result is. That gave us a slightly warmer option. If I come up here and click, We've warmed it up again, and I think that's a much better white balance. But I tend to find that my camera does a very good job of creating an auto white balance, and that's the case for most modern day cameras. If you do need to change that, that's one way of doing it with the eyedropper tool, but you also have direct access to the slider to fine tune things if you want to as well. If you're unsure whether things should be a bit warmer or cooler, while well, neutral is the preference for architectural shots, if you had to go one way or the other, I would normally opt for a warmer image than a cooler one. The next thing that we need to look at is our profile. So if you're using a mainstream camera, hopefully Luminar should have access to your camera's specific profiles. So from within here, I have access to camera neutral, portrait, standard, all of these different profiles. And I like to work with a camera neutral profile. That's very much flattened out the overall look of the image, but it does help with the overall dynamic range. So now we have this flatter image to work with. We're gonna jump into the curve section 
And just like in Lightroom, how you can play around with curves and finesse things, that's exactly what we can do in Luminar as well. So if we want to darken the shadows, we can put a point to the left of the curve and just bring that down. If we then want to boost the midtones, we can just grab somewhere in the middle and start to bring that up as well. And if you feel that the highlights outside are just getting a little bit too blown out, you can put a point on to control the highlights and bring those down a little. But by introducing a little bit more contrast via the tone curve here, the saturation has started to increase, particularly in this woody area up here. And so we can jump into the color section. And from here, we can dial into the saturation so that if we want to, we can desaturate the image. And like I say, it's getting away on us a little bit. So I am going to desaturate it just ever so slightly. You can see that the oranges are just a little bit oversaturated. So we'll bring those down. And I also feel that the blue outside in the sky, it's just a little too punchy at the moment. So if I bring those blues down, I just want to get that blue sky to kind of be in a place where it looks a little bit more believable and convincing. So I'm pretty happy with that. I feel that the editing you do for architectural shots kind of falls into two categories. You have technical corrections, and I feel that that's everything that we've been doing so far. I'm also going to apply a bit of sharpening, and I feel that that is also a technical correction. Once we've done that, what we're able to do here, which we aren't really able to do through Lightroom, is we can start to look at a slightly more creative approach. And while I'll be keeping this very minimal for an architectural piece, this is not a creative piece per se, I may want to see if I can leverage and utilize some of Luminar's AI just to enhance it just that little bit. So first of all, let's jump into the details and we're just gonna sharpen the image. And to check what that looks like, I'm just gonna zoom into an area, let Luminar render it so we can see all the tiles in the background, the kettle, all the grain in the wood. And so that's with sharpening at 100%. So if I turn that off, we see our original image. And now I'll turn it back on. And I think this sharpening in Luminar does a very good job. And I'm not afraid at this point just to push that pretty hard. Let's, let's put that somewhere around 80. The detail refinement, I find that normally a little too aggressive. Like if I push that to 100, I don't really like the look of this. The same for the medium and large as well. But what I will do is just push in just a tiny bit of this. Maybe set each of those to three. And now if we turn this off and on, you can see that we've sharpened this up really nicely. We may be adding just a little bit of noise. And while I've shot this at ISO 100, it's a nice clean file. As we've boosted up these shadows quite considerably, noise is going to start to be introduced. You can see some of that starting to creep into the fridge here on this neutral kind of surface. So we'll just come into denoise, crank that up to around 19, not bad. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Bring it back down to, oh, I don't know. Let's leave it at 11 and zoom back out. Let's have a quick look at our before and our after. We are able to do that in Luminar as well. So if you saw my video the other day where I edited in Lightroom and showed you how we could make adjustments to architectural photos there, we have been able to do everything, everything we did in Lightroom here in Luminar as well. It's fully accessible to us. The only tool that I find a little more frustrating in Luminar than Lightroom is whereas Lightroom has a guided tool so you can actually draw lines for getting your verticals nice and straight, Luminar, we're actually having to come in and uh, tweak the verticals with a slider. But if you're having trouble with getting that precise, um, which often I do because you're moving in increments of like one, two at a time, you can actually select the number and actually type in the number that you want. And so I got that comment saying the other day that if only Luminar could do this as well. I'm just showing you here that everything we did in Lightroom is available to us here within Luminar. But the really cool thing is beyond that, we now have access to Luminar's more creative tools. So there's no harm in us coming up to Enhance AI and creeping in a little bit of Accent AI. And just as I've shown you in other videos, normally I like to push something all the way, far too much to 100, just so we can see exactly what it's doing to the image. And so I don't like what it's doing here. I find it far too surreal for what we're trying to achieve with our architectural edit. So without any of that, I think that's actually a much better call for this particular one. Whereas normally Accent AI and Luminar AI, a brilliant feature, brilliant tool, and can get you to your results very quickly. 
but we're taking a bit more of a manual approach here and we're using Luminar as more of a raw editor and taking a little bit more control. But the other thing we could look at is structure AI. So if I start pushing this up, you'll see that we are indeed starting to add more structure. If I go far too heavy to the right, you can see that we're getting a lot of detail all in the wood, in the wooden panels here. Things are looking a little bit too fake, a little bit too crunchy, but because we've gone to 100, we can clearly see exactly what this tool is doing. Now let's just bring it back to a point that we feel is an appropriate amount, somewhere maybe around that sort of like 13 mark. So if I turn that off and on, it's much more subtle, but it's just adding a little bit more pop. And call me crazy, but I'm going to jump into one of my favorite tools in Luminar here. I'm going to open up Mystical and I'm going to grab the amount slider, push it all the way to 100. And now you can see we've got a kind of hazy, soft focus look, but it's kind of smudging the colors together in a semi-pleasing way. I don't want to say pleasing way because, again, 100 is far too much. But we can see exactly what that tool's doing. And call me crazy, but I'm actually just going to tickle a little bit of that in, maybe just around that seven mark. Something, again, really subtle. So if I turn that off and turn it on, it's barely noticeable, but it's there. And I think I'm going to call that done for this particular edit. Let's look at our before and our after. And just like with the previous video where I showed you in Lightroom how you can build this edit into a preset, you can do the same thing here by coming down to saving your template. The only thing you don't want to save into it though is the crop and the correction of the verticals because every single photograph that you take will need its own individual correction on those verticals, potentially the horizontals and its own crop. We also desaturated this image just because the wood, the oranges in the wood was, were just getting away on us a little bit. So I would also recommend for your template, just save in a global reduction of the saturation. And then if you need to do specific color work, you can do that afterwards. But basically by saving this out as a template, you are going to be 95% of the way there for correcting an image from taking it from something like this, where you have blown out highlights, the shadows aren't really visible. It very much looks like a shot straight out of camera to this, something that you can actually deliver to your client. Now in this video, I don't want to go too far in terms of being really specific on the editing. I just wanted to give you an overview of how powerful Luminar AI can be in assisting you with architectural photography editing, real estate photography editing. But I will just show you one more quick tip. As I'm sure you'll be aware, Luminar AI has local masking in there. And so if you have particular problem areas, so for example, just through the doorway here and on the wall, I'm seeing that there is a little bit of color cast going on. I'm not really enjoying this kind of greeny tone we have going on here. I don't want to reduce the greens globally in the image because I don't want to take away the green from outside the window here. So what I'm going to do is just add a new local mask, a basic mask. I may just boost up the exposure ever so slightly because we want to brighten up that white area there. And then the color toning that's off here, we're just going to take care of that by bringing the saturation down. We're not going to take it out completely so it's black and white. We want to leave a little bit of color in there for believability, but we're certainly going to reduce that cast. And now with the brush tool, we're just going to paint this back in. I'm using my right bracket key just to make that a little bigger. And where this red mask is, we can see this is where it's going to paint that in. So there you go. We're painting at 50% opacity. I don't want to bleed over the wood too much, but there you go. We've brightened and neutralized this area. So if I turn that off and turn that on, that's really nice, easy fix. You could do the same thing on this panel over here. If I reduce the brush size down just slightly, we could just do one stroke there. Nothing crazy, but it's just helping to sort out and neutralize those white areas. All right, so you can do that. You can add local masks to your liking, if we wanted to add a bit more contrast to the exterior here, we could do that. We could bring the exposure down a little bit. We could increase the contrast, although that's not really helping for outside because everything's based so much in the highlights. Let's bring the highlights down, see what that does for us. I think we're gonna get the most bang for our buck out of structure, which we are. So if I turn that off and I turn it on and I'm looking outside, we're certainly getting a bit more detail that was kind of missing out there. So again, we can just paint that back in. I'm not gonna do it at, um, 50% this time. Let's go for 33% and I'm just going to lightly paint very roughly just over the exterior here. Just get a bit more detail in those mountains and that house out there. And if I turn that off, 
and turn it on. It's just a subtle improvement outside there. You could do the same thing if you wanted to bring a bit more detail back in the highlights that got blown out here. We've got highlights up in the roof that we might want to bring a little bit more detail into that wood. Now while I was explaining those initial steps, it may have seemed like a long lengthy process, but it's really, really not. It just seemed long because I'm explaining it. But save that into a preset and it's gonna be a massive time saver. You can invest more time, as you see here, by adding local masks just to refine things a little further. But as you can see, we can use Luminar AI to take us from something like this to something like this, send it off to our client. We didn't need to use any extra flash. We didn't need to worry about any luminosity masking. We didn't need to worry about HDR. We did it all with one file inside Luminar AI. But if you're doing this, make sure you're shooting raw. You can't do it with a JPEG. There's just not enough data there. So once you've saved these edits as a template, you will be able to turn around your photograph from what we see here, the original file, to this edited version that we can send back to the architect or real estate agent in under a minute. Potentially all you need to do is just straighten your verticals and horizontals and make any slight color adjustments if need be. And if you want to take things one step further, yes, you can add local masking. Now let's have a look at how this photo holds up against the Lightroom version. So in this finished version in Luminar AI, I feel like we've achieved a believable and authentic scene. We've managed to boost the shadow detail and also control the highlight detail so that we can actually see this beautiful view that these guys are spoilt with. The high level of joinery and detailing within the kitchen is all visible. So for an edit that, if I weren't narrating it, probably would only take me one, maybe two minutes max, this is a pretty good result. Now let's have a look at our Lightroom version. So this Lightroom version has gone through the same process that we went through in Luminar. Basically we've dropped the highlights, boosted the shadows, I then desaturated the image slightly. I applied optical corrections to allow for lens distortion and I corrected the vertical so they're nice and straight. So now if I just hop quickly between the two, we've got a very similar result, but I actually feel that the Luminar version has got the edge. We do have more detail outside. I feel like we've got a nicer balance to the exposure as a whole. I feel that the treatment of the view that we have outside is better and more authentic. And overall, I just prefer this file. I feel that in our Lightroom version, things were getting a little bit too dark and muddy in the kitchen area. Now, of course, that can be improved through local masking inside of Lightroom as well. But in terms of what the two programs can achieve from the point of view of editing architectural photography, overall, I feel that Luminar AI does have the edge because as well as making those technical corrections to the photo, we're also able to leverage some of the more creative and AI driven tools inside of Luminar AI. Admittedly, for architectural photography, you want to apply those with more consideration and in a more subtle way, but the fact that you can apply them is a plus for Luminar. So for the Luminar owners who watched that last video, all done in Lightroom, and may have had Lightroom envy, please don't, because I think you guys have actually got the edge.